Hi, Doug Grant here. Uh, many of you that follow us and uh, look for nutritional advice know us as a nutritionist that train doctors. We spend most of our time doing that. And uh, I had a lot of questions about uh, the new uh, coronavirus, uh, COVID-19. And I've been hesitant because I'm not a doctor to talk about it. But a lot of people are wanting to know from a nutrition standpoint, from things that they could eat and do to what would they need to do to protect themselves. And because uh, most of the doctors are not taught nutrition, they come to us and, and know that we do a lot of that training for the docs, wanting to know what we think. So I want to take a minute to tell you what we think. And I want to do it based on not just what we think, but what we know based on full research. So if there is a study done and a true double blind study done on certain things that we think that might help, I'll talk to you about it right now. It's just so that you can separate fact from fiction. But let's first start about uh, the coronavirus and understand that there are three that are most severe of the diseases like SARS, MERS, and COVID-19. And the 2020 COVID-19 epidemic is notable because it's a new virus in humans and it spreads much faster and wider globally than in SARS or MERS. Um, and it has a high case fatality rate amongst older people. Now, the other four coronaviruses um, have long been widespread globally and cause about 10 to 30 percent of upper respiratory tract infections in adults. A lot of people don't realize that. So COVID-19 has around 10 to 20 times the case fatality rate of the seasonal flu at around 2 percent of the people infected. I want you to understand that it is much higher than the flu, but it's at 2 percent of the people it's infected. 98 percent of the people infected uh, don't die from this. <clears throat> and it's usually uh, the rates as you get older, you know, become a little higher than reach up to that 2%. So the fatality rate may go down as more people are diagnosed because a lot of the milder cases aren't even being reported. So it's something to watch, but it is something for us to know about and to follow. And so the thing I want to really talk about with you, first of all, is called viral load. If you have a harmful virus in the body, and by the way, a lot of this research comes to us from a lot of the, our sites as we do research on JAMA, New England Journal of Medicine, examine.com, and others that, that put a lot of great stuff together, and they're able to fact check and actually put studies with this. So just so you know where a lot of the, the research that we look for and that we follow comes from, and so this viral loads basically how much of a virus there is per volume of a fluid like blood or the phlegmy type stuff in the back of your throat called sputum. sputum. So COVID-19, the viral load appears to peak right around five to six days after symptoms start. So those without symptoms can also have a significant viral load, which suggests that the virus can be spread before the person actually becomes symptomatic. So that's kind of one of the, the problems. So what do you do about it? First of all, you want to minimize your exposure to the virus. And the absolute most important thing you can do is, guess what? Not the mask. <laughs> the most important thing based on the research shows is to wash your hands for more than 20 seconds and don't touch your mouth, your nose, or your eyes. Now studies suggest that only 5% of the population when they wash their hands, wash it long enough, the 20 seconds to kill infecting causing germs. So number one, wash your hands. The coronavirus are what's called envelope, uh, envelope type viruses. And they, and the reason is, that is because they have this lipid coating with spikes on them, like a ball, picture ball with a lipid coating with spikes on them that allow easier binding to target tissue. So this coating makes the coronavirus is more susceptible also to disinfectants. So it's important that we want to be able to wash our hands and really use um, things, hand sanitizers, things like that, that will really, really help a lot, okay? So COVID-19, this infectious disease, um, is spread more widely than the previous ones. It is a concern, but what can we do about it from my standpoint, from a nutritionist standpoint, from just out there and what you can do nutritionally uh, to be able to fight this or to protect yourself against it, okay? So here's what we know for a fact nutritionally. Nobody knows how well the cold flu or supplement trials that we have on um, supplements and food for viruses to protect yourself against them. We don't know how they apply to the coronaviruses. The novel coronavirus is too new and is not structurally exactly the same as either influenza or the various cold viruses. That being said, there are a few supplements that have really, you know, good evidence for cold and flu. This is what we're going to talk about that evidence 
and what those are, because it would be wise to increase those nutrient levels because there is some good research on them for viruses and we'll see how it plays out for the coronavirus. First one's vitamin C. So we know that vitamin C we can reduce the symptom duration if you're already using it regularly. So especially for older people and athletes that become more deficient in it. And there are many studies showing that vitamin C can help to reduce the symptom duration. In other words, if you get uh, some form of influenza or whatever it might be, virus, that we can reduce the amount of time, which means it builds up the immune system uh, to be able to help fight it off. <clears throat> so vitamin C. Number two, vitamin D. This is a really important one because vitamin D has been proven to help prevent upper respiratory infections. And there are many great studies showing how it can help prevent upper respiratory infections and spending a long time indoors during winter is tied to seasonal flu, um, you know, lower vitamin D levels, higher flu transmission in closed areas, and a lack of the solar UV rays is a factor. But there's also studies done out of Arizona where we live uh, showing that it's really easy to have low vitamin D. And they do show that vitamin D levels, when they're up, can prevent upper respiratory infections. So remember, the coronavirus affects mainly on the respiratory system in the body. So that's a biggie. Another one is zinc. We know that zinc can help reduce symptoms uh, due to inhibiting bioreplication, and it can do it at the back of your throat and other areas. So uh, it's great to be able to make sure that our zinc levels are up. There's also some preliminary evidence, some studies are out uh, with you know at least two to three studies, some of them a little bit more, on some other nutrients uh, that have been able to prove it to help. Garlic could be one of them. Uh, garlic has many more antibacterial studies than antiviral studies, but there are a few good uh, antiviral studies with garlic, but it has mainly been an antibacterial world. Echinacea, the great herb that many of you that are in the, the herbal industry or nutrition industry know uh, that as a phenomenal herb, there are some studies on echinacea and uh, showing its help with viruses. Uh, elderberry is another one with a few studies on it. Uh, probiotics. Now, you know, they're, they're, they're not one monolithic thing. Certain specific strains of probiotics, you might have heard of acidophilus or bifidus, thermophilus, things like that. Certain strains can help with the prevention and you know, the efficacy may vary greatly by person based on your own what's called microbiome individuality. In other words, how, how, much, how, many, uh, how built up is your friendly bacteria? If you consume sodas, if you take any antibiotics, if you're heavy stress, you probably don't have a very good probiotic or microbiome in the body. So probiotics are something that I personally am a huge, huge fan of to be able to boost immunity and the research on it. It's all the way back from Dr. Shahani at the University of Nebraska, one of my original mentors, and his work with it, saying, Doug, for viruses, it, this is the key. It really can help because it's known as your second immune system. So there are studies done on probiotics. Um, with it, it's interesting, some studies vary in what they show with viruses and probiotics. But looking at it, from my opinion, it looks like the studies that show it, they're beneficial and they really help boost uh, the immune system that can help with virus situations uh, versus the ones that don't or ones that are done with strains that uh, aren't absorbed in the gut and are actually colonized, we call it. In other words, they make it through the acidity and, and the heat and be able to actually stay alive and colonize. So you want to make sure that the probiotics you get are stabilized, heat-resistant type uh, probiotics. So also a big fan of enzymes to be able to help anything you can do to help take pressure off the body. You know, plant enzymes when you cook food uh, will digest that food uh, for you so that your body doesn't have to do all the work. Anytime your body's working to do something, in other words, when we're eating food and our body's having a heart, or trying to digest it, blood's being sent there and energy's being sent there and we don't have as much energy being, out, being able to be used to fight off and be aware of things going on. So anything we can do to help digestion. So kind of uh, as a little bit of a come together and, and uh, talk about it as a whole. Vitamin-wise, vitamin C, vitamin D, mineral zinc, uh, garlic, echinacea, elderberry, probiotics, and enzymes. Those are what the research shows can really help from a nutrition or nutritional supplementation standpoint to either boost your immunity for prevention of viruses, hopefully the coronavirus, but also to help when we do come down with something to shorten the duration, which we can see is a big factor with this. 
And we do know that poor diet, overall diet, macronutrients or carbs or proteins and fats is tied to increased infection risk. We know also that lack of sleep is a big factor. So I really want to leave with the importance of getting enough sleep, being able to eat healthy, the more processed the food, the worse it is for you. I think that that's a basic understanding that innately we all know, but it's something really to focus on right now, to really uh, focus in more on the fresh fruits, the fresh vegetables, especially vegetables, because of their um, effects on viral uh, factors in the body and to be able to boost the immune system. And so we really want to focus on those things. And as we do that, we build our immunity, we keep our minds strong, we keep our body strong, make sure the nutrients are present. We're going to give us uh, the best shot to be able to not just have to worry about things like the coronavirus, but any type of uh, influenza, bacteria, virus that comes our way. Have a great day. Hey doctors, Doug here. I wanted to give you a little bit of bonus information that's really important. Um, one of our great uh, staff members that we've worked with forever, he is one of the researchers for the company and his wife is originally from China and he was looking at the sites that uh, for some reason are not coming up in America telling us about some of the things that are going on with the coronavirus in, in China and Japan and that. And so his wife, uh, being able to speak uh, the language, went on and was able to get on some of the sites and pull up some amazing information. And so what I'd like to do is invite you to go to OptimalHealthSystems.com and scan down to where it says blog. Click on the blog and there's actually a blog piece there on the coronavirus and what the other countries around the world are doing to actually treat it. You're going to be blown away. It's an amazing read. It's really short, but I think you'll love it a lot. So go to OptimalHealthSystems.com, click on the blog, or you can even go to blog.OptimalHealthSystems.com, and you'll see on the coronavirus blog to click on that. Some phenomenal information. Don't know how long it's going to be up, so definitely click on it today and check it out.